Good morning. I uh, want to welcome you to the second day of the NIJ conference. Uh, I hope that you've enjoyed all the concurrent sessions that took place yesterday and this morning. Uh, before we uh, begin this session, uh, I just want to uh, say that uh, yesterday I announced the uh, coming of uh, Dr. Greg Ridgway to the National Institute of Justice. Uh, Greg yesterday was in California. He is now here uh, and joined us. And I'd like to ask Greg to, to stand up so you can at least get a look at him. And uh, Greg is the uh, new deputy director and will oversee the social science, forensic science, and physical and technical sciences at NIJ. And we're just delighted that he's going to be joining us formally in July. Um, also, uh, there's an old adage that uh, Nobody in any organization is indispensable. However, when I Google search NIJ, Christina Rose, in indispensable, she's there. Uh, and Chris is going to be overseeing the Office of Communications, the Office of Operations, and the new Office of Research Partnerships. She is the second deputy, directory, de deputy director at NIJ. And I just want to stress, we now have a very strong team in place. And I look forward to working with both of them over the next several months. So Chris, please stand up so everyone knows you. So thank you. Thank you for that indulgence. Um, this morning's plenary is on a topic that is currently in crisis level in this country, incarceration. Uh, it's a topic of great importance to NIJ, as it is, I'm sure, to many of you. And before I introduce our speaker today, I want to tell you a little bit about what NIJ is doing in the area of corrections. As many of you know, uh, one of NIJ's sister agencies, the Bureau of Justice Assistance, provided funding to do a HOPE uh, demonstration field experiment. For those of you that are not familiar with the original uh, Hawaii HOPE program, this was a successful pilot program uh, launched by Judge Stephen Alm in Hawaii to reduce probation violations by drug offenders and others at high risk of recidivism. The New Hope demonstration field experiment is essentially a replication of the Hope, Hawaii HOPE program in four mainland U.S. communities that differ in population, density, and geographic location. NIJ's role is related to the evaluation. We recently provided funding to the RTI International to evaluate the HOPE demonstration field experiment. This evaluation will help us determine the impact of the HOPE program on reoffending and also identify the likely challenges and costs that a jurisdiction should expect when implementing the program. Through the evaluation, we hope to generate uh, evidence about the HOPE program provide insight as to whether the HOPE program works in communities that are different from the original Hawaii program, and explain what factors contribute to the program's success or failure in various jurisdictions. Results should be available in 2015, but we will be providing updates as the research unfolds in the field. Uh, I also want to let you know that with the MacArthur Foundation, NIJ has funded the National Research Council to create a special panel of experts looking at uh, mass incarceration. This special panel consists of experts in criminology, law, sociology, public policy, and related fields. Through this study, panel members were examined the existing scientific evidence on the causes and consequences of incarceration in the United States. They will also examine the costs and benefits of the nation's current incarceration policies and explore whether there is evidence that alternative punishments might achieve similar public safety benefits as well as uh, reduce both financial and social costs. At the conclusion of the study, and this is what NIJ is most interested in, the panel will produce a research agenda uh, to address gaps in our current knowledge and address areas where policy is not currently supported by rigorous research and evidence. As I said yesterday, one of my goals coming to NIJ was to establish NIJ as the leader in criminal justice research in the United States. And part of that is to be at the forefront of what I consider to be examining cutting edge topics of importance to the field. That's why I'm very happy to announce that NIJ intends to fund the Stanford Criminal Justice Center to support the study, How Justice Systems Realign in California, the policies and systematic effects of prison downsizing. With this funding, the Stanford Criminal Justice Center will assess the realignment outcomes in California, 
The co-principal investigators for the study, no surprise here, will be Joan Perticilia and Robert Weisberg. This proposed award is subject to the availability of appropriated funds and any modifications or, requ or additional requirements may be imposed by law. But we're very excited about that, Joan, and look forward to the results. So, without further ado, I'd like to introduce Dr. Joan Perticilia. Um, Joan is the Elder Burt H. Sweet Professor of Law at Stanford Law School. Uh, she spent more than 25 years studying the performance of criminal justice agencies and has been instrumental in affecting sentencing and corrections reform in California and indeed throughout the United States. She's the author of 11 books about crime and public policy and her research on parole reform, prison reintegration, sentencing policy has fueled changes in those policies throughout the nation. Without a doubt, Joan is a stellar scholar and a world leader in criminology and criminal justice. She is also uh, a faculty co-director at the Stanford Criminal Justice Center, which focuses on policies related to crime control and sentencing and corrections and developing nonpartisan analyses and recommendations attending to aid public officials, legal practitioners, and the public in understanding criminal justice policy at the state and national levels. Before joining the Stanford Law School faculty, Joan was professor of criminology, law, and society in the School of Social Ecology at the University of California, Irvine, and director of UCI's Center for Evidence-Based Correction. She also previously served as a special advisor to Governor Schwarzenegger, uh, helping to reorganize juvenile and adult corrections and working with the California State Legislature to implement prison and parole reform. She recently chaired Governor Schwarzenegger's Rehabilitation Strike Team and was also co-chair of California's Expert Panel on Offender Programs. Joan is the former director of the Criminal Justice Program at the RAND Corporation, former president of the American Society of Criminology, former co-director of the National Research Council Study on Community Supervision and Assistance from Crime, and the former director of the National Research Council Study on Crime Victims with Developmental Disabilities. Now, Joan is a longtime friend and colleague in fact, the first time I presented a paper at the American Society of Criminology meeting, I was a graduate student, I believe it was Atlanta, 1977. Joan was on the panel presenting her groundbreaking work on criminal careers from the famous Rand study. I remember vividly the discussion on that panel was Albert J. Reese, Jr. And if you've ever encountered Al Reese, you knew what I was in for. Al proceeded to praise Joan as somebody who actually does research and summarily dismissed me and Mike Hindelane as individuals who merely talked about research. And I was only in good company because of Mike Hindelane, otherwise as a graduate student I would have been devastated for life. Now what impresses me most about Joan's work is that whatever topic she chooses to study, she does so in a fair and objective manner. Joan is a scientist, not an ideologue. And currently, there's lots of lip service given to phrases like best practices, evidence-based decision-making. But for Joan, these are not phrases or jargon. Joan has committed herself to doing high-quality research to get the best possible answers to shape public policies regarding justice and crime control. Unlike many in the field, Joan has emphasized translating research results into action. In fact, Joan transcends the research policy divide and offers a model to all of us as to how we could do both well. Indeed, more than anyone I know, Joan is always thinking about research in the context of policy. Her career is motivated by the application of research to reduce crime, protect victims, and to promote justice. I'm delighted that Joan has accepted our invitation to serve as a keynote speaker at the NIJ conference. Please join me in welcoming Joan Priscilla.